Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the long-awaited series of the day, our final series here for the GSCC qualifiers, at least on day one, to find out who will face off execration in the winner's bracket, who Ten will face off against remaining. Mineski from the lowest bracket. So here we are, Fnatic versus Geek Fam. Ohio, the drama, feels bad, man. But anyways, I'm excited to see Universe playing with this Fnatic roster. They look extremely stacked. Geek Fam are going to have their work cut out. Going up against all these experienced players. A huge variety of different styles of Dota, which you can definitely bring to the table here. So... If possible, I'd like to, you know, request that everyone try to just enjoy the game instead of having any hate. Let's just wait. We're all on community, Five right? So, this should be pretty good. Fnatic start open up with a Shadow Shaman pick. Geek Fam going straight for the Tiny Night Stalker. No real surprises there. Good map control heroes and Tiny from the safe lane or the off lane. Always pretty good to watch. But, alright, so... I wonder what heroes, you know, Envy has in mind for Universe to play. They do go ahead with the Elder Titan pickup. Should be DJ on the ET with Pi playing on the Shadow Shaman. They just take out all these offlaning heroes which they're afraid of playing against. The Brewmaster, Doom, Omni Knight. You still leave in the pool heroes like Batrider, Tidehunter, Darkseer. Five seconds remaining. Could see something like a Nature's Prophet. I don't think that's a universe hero. I always see him as... See, I'm a master of teamfight heroes, right? To bang. So, right. We'd like to open this up with, like, a Goku shout and saying, Welcome to Universe, you know, and see. Let's, you know. It's to be pretty much called it. Tweeted it a while back. I kind of guessed. I didn't say we got a fanatic, but, yeah. Ten seconds. Cast this curse is real. But, anyways, so far from this draft alone, Sh Shaman Five into an ET pick. Remaining. The chain stun is absolutely crazy. And natural, you know, natural order is just such an annoying passive to play against. You don't see it, but it's there. It's there, and you will f feel the pain, especially in heroes with high armor. It's basically go basically gone. But anyways, you know, so much like you take out the Omni Knight and the Brewmaster. These are just heroes which Ohio used to play as well. Omni Knight was his thing. I believe it was like a Sanji Yasha, Yule Scepter kind of thing. I mean, Universe could have adopted that build as well. But yeah, they take out the Faceless Void. Radiant I mean, how can you forget Band. Universe and the Faceless Void? Bat right out. This is just Band. six offlaning bands. What? Radiant team pick. Fanatics turn to pick. But this is a smart play. I have to say this is a smart play because, you know, obviously Universe hasn't had much time to practice with this roster. So it would make sense that just by banning out all the potential offlaning heroes, you're afraid. This is where... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this this is where it, it makes sense. So this way it makes it cuts out any potential Five of fanatic getting the heroes with the chemistry that they would like in the team fights. Alright, so Tinker Ban. I mean Tron, he's a very talented player. Even with the WG youth squad back then in his previous team, he did amazingly well. So big things to expect, you know? This isn't the march from the MVP, guys. Don't don't worry about that. Radiant so what did they decide to pick up here? They actually go back into the Envy Luna. It almost feels like Envy isn't too worried about these bans, like the fact that they're banning on all these offlaning heroes, they're not afraid because they, they know that they have options. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. This is like a razor mid, should be like a, it's either a razor mid or a razor safe lane. They still have time, Skirmbaloo has time to think based on the draft alone. They could opt to go into an aggressive lane, putting say tiny safe with the razor into the off lane. But with the Night Stalker pick, you generally just want to have him moving around, not so much as a laning hero. Oh, 
Right, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Yeah, keep him taking the time to think about this, especially when you're laning... So when you're drafting against Eternal Envy, you know, that's something where you have to always bear in mind the surprise factor. Fanatics turn to pick. Winter Wyvern. But the Wyvern pick will come out, so that's your pause 5. I mean, if you think about it from another perspective as well, Geek Fam, you know, these guys are like, we want to avenge our fellow Malaysian, do him justice. So, I'm pretty sure if you guys are from Malaysia, you guys are kind of rooting for Geek Fam, right? Mostly. Ten what are you, the first ten fanboys? Ten. I am okay. Honestly, curious though. Like, if you're uh, a, a universe fanboy mean. and you're Malaysian, who do you root for in this game? Do you still root for Fnatic or do you root for Geek Fan? Like, it's all about whether you decide to be patriotic. All right. Let's see how this goes. Thirty seconds left. They could go ahead and decide to pick up an Abed hero, Queen of Pain, Invoker. I mean, come to think of it, we haven't seen that many Invoker picks. Radiant team back. Yep, the Queen of Pain comes out, so Abed hero. <laughs> so how does Geek Fam want to play into this? You you don't want to pick a Shadow Shaman. Sorry, uh, you don't want to pick a Shadow Fiend. Ten when you see the Queen remaining. of Pain, Storm Spirit wouldn't Five wouldn't be the play remaining. here. Neither would Invoker. Yeah, very hard. There's like very little reliable stuns coming out inside the Geek Fan. Sieging heroes, they don't exactly have the best of heroes as well. So playing plenty of emphasis at least on the laning phase for the Night Stalker to do a lot. I mean, one other thing I could have missed out as well is like a Winter Wyvern playing in the off lane, like the Ice Ice build. You let the Razor go into the safe lane, tiny mid, with the Night Stalker still roaming around, and you actually pick up a pause 5. Hmm... Fanatics turn to ban. Okay, so Beastmaster taken out. No surprise, another off laning hero. You still could always see the Tyrant to pick come out. It's very classic. You could go into the Dark Seer. Actually, Dark Seer synergy would be pretty good here with the ET. But they take out the Bird Mother. They are afraid of the cheese. Dark Seer. Enigma. Strong laning hero. A bit greedy as well because of the long cooldown. But he farms up pretty fast. This hero can actually destroy a lane. Just keep. You know, taking away the, that range creep. Pretty big advantage. You could also use it to help Abed get a bit of advantage. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Ah, speaking of which, looks like my TI Aegis just arrived. <coughs> But there we go, the Dusa pick will come out, so Maximum Greed coming out from the side of Geek Fam. Not sure how I feel about this, but still okay, it will be a Dusa mid. Tiny off lane, Razor safe lane. It's still okay, it's, it's pretty decent. What is that? What is that Luna mount? Holy shit. It looks like a dinosaur. Or a goblin. Kinda mix. Or like a mole rat. At the same time, all three mixed into one. But game one, ladies and gentlemen, Fnatic versus Geek Fam here, our second best of three series on the Beyond the Summit 2 channel. Remaining. This is gonna this is gonna be intense. I mean can can Geek Fam defend Malaysian pride for the sake of Ohio? Plot twist. He's actually a, a Geek Fam team house right now as a coach. I 
I mean, to a certain degree, wouldn't you be a bit afraid if you're like, you know, a Malaysian team? Like, you, if Ohio said, oh, I want to join you guys, you could be at a you could be facing a potential roster shuffle, right? Mm, or he could just be like trying to form his own WG squad. I don't know. I mean, WG did let go of the recent roster. Really. But there we are, game one. And there we go on the dire side. NV playing on the Luna Universe on the Enigma. Pylai Dai will be the one playing the ET instead. DJ playing on the Shaman with Alban on the Queen of Pain. For the Radiant side, Geek Fam Oli on the Winter Wyvern. And Xion playing on that Medusa. You're gonna have Play Hard on the Night Stalker. March on the Tiny. And you're gonna have Scumbaloo playing on the Razor. He's tempting it. Justice 4? Complete that sentence, be a man. Excalibur. <laughs> Maybe there's a bit of a secret thing going on here. I feel like I'm missing out on a joke. Five heroes now smoke dump. Where do they want to go? Wyvern? Go into the enemy jungle? Alright. Ooh, they could find a razor. Who's all by himself? His lonesome self. But they have to suspect that something is going on. They don't see anyone. 30 seconds to they found one hero and Scumbaloo, he's gonna dodge it immediately. Everyone's out. Abed really pings a lot, doesn't he? So it's gonna be two runes. Doesn't look like it, does it? Nah, they're gonna get the rune. The battle begins. Oh, I bet could get two. Worthy tribute. This way, Ollie gets a nice creep block as well. The battle of the blocks between both pause fives. Who's gonna have the better block? DJ is actually let one creep through. Wants the wave to push in, perhaps. And already universe taking care of the range creep. Tons of EXP being denied to this Razor, who will actually be left alone in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which allows the support's room to just rotate around the other lanes. Especially since Envy did go for the level one Luna's blessing. DJ coming in with the astral spread. He's happy to get the trades up, bashing away onto play hard. Fnatic will zone out, march in play. Using the void, pile I die. Yep, get as many hits in as you can. That's close, that mana shield. I bet also very low. Both these mid players playing with fire. Top end still very intense and very evened out. This tri lane barely holding on. Ollie did get the D ward. No gold. Scumbelo still trying to build his way onto his boots. The CS does go to Envy right now, 7-0. Razor will kind of pick up. Once again, you know, this is just that downtime during the laning phase. Both teams trying to secure their cores. Levels, safely, EXP, EXP over gold any day. But Tron, he's doing okay, holding his ground against Mr. Arbet. Matched very evenly in this lane, 4-4 four four, though, to the 8-3. This Abed has just slightly superior thing, but DJ Top will take care of March. First blood going to DJ. 
And that was when Playhard went around to get the bounty rune, so that was a big opening which they, you know, they took advantage of. And he's still stuck at level 1 because he's sharing the lane with Playhard. Haha. <laughs> Hmm, so nothing much for now. Wonder if Abed could actually still make a play into Chion. Very hard. In your face. And this top lane is just still getting zoned out. The creep wave is kind of pushing in a bit, just a tiny bit. How's so. Universe doing in this off lane? 8 and 5. Just a bit behind the Razor, trying to make sure that his Eidolons don't die. No rotation, Oli as well doing very nicely to control the creep wave in. Couple of pulls. I mean, you can look at DJ and Pyre, right? they're, they're playing slightly more aggressive. To push out, just making sure that they don't die. Trying to jump into the tiny, they think they're thinking about it actually. Lane, oh, I'll bet. Bringing Shion very low. 80 HP. If he had a blink, he would have gone for that kill. Very quiet laning phase, I must admit. When you have a tri lane just babysitting Envy like that. 20 to 3. Still happy that he's getting decent CS, you know. Once more, Playheart going straight for the runes. Opening onto March, which he has to back out of there. Two and a half. Middle lane, Trion manning up against Abed. Who's going to win this man fight? The Nice Talker's coming in. Abed, he has to commit all or nothing. The Void's going to be there, and Abed ends up going down to Playheart. And he gets the deny as well. Regen runes for Oli. Yeah, I don't think he would have survived that, even though he had the self. Meanwhile, March, finally in a forever alone status. One to one. But it's really very hard, like, you, you just want to make sure your Luna gets a bit more of an advantage before you actually finally leave the lane. Still getting a Mystic Snake proc, whew, tasty. But hard call, you know, like, they want to chase off the march, they do get the shackle. Looking for the storm, Punk. down he goes with the Aether Shock as well. They can right click him down, they have the shackle in 3 seconds. Not the target he was looking for and they have the shackle. They will use it and Pilot will just club him down with that briefcase. Getting down march one more time. 0-2 in the lane with only 5 CS. Play hard, gonna say hi to... Stealing away that creep. Like how he stole Ohio's place. Alright, so 5 minutes 45 seconds in. Still, yeah, like, like I said, it's very hard for them to get any rotations around. You can try to stack a bit for the Queen of Pain, but she should be making rotations by the time she's level 7. And double bounty runes for DJ. Has the Hex as well, could think about making a play onto March if he had one more hero. Saying hi. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And Universe once again playing it play hard, he Dyer's had them he has the Malphys. Radiance top tower is under attack. Anyways, top Dyer's lane. Now they want to decide to push out the wave with the double siege card. Did he have a helm of Dom? Luna has a Helm of Dom, so they're playing very, very quick paced order right now. Together with the Enigma. Wow. I have I haven't seen this item on a core in a very long time. Like especially from the safe lane. Usually you see it on Beastmasters, Dark Seers. I I haven't seen it on Luna ever since they changed it. Like when you took away lifesteal. But I'll bet has the Sonic Wave available to him. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack.
But the gold advantage does lie in favor of Fnatic. Universe will make his way towards drums in the first item. This game plan, it's, it's really all in on, on the mid game. Playouts coming in the first night time, but Arbet senses the danger and immediately blinks out. But you have Envy coming to the middle lane now. Okay, he, he's very starved of levels. Like, not completely starved, but as in, like, you would like him to maybe get level 6 before he does start to rotate around like this. It's only 5 and a half. But already moving straight to the bottom lane, he wants to get involved. Razor also with good CS, you know, 46 and 8. Blessings upon a loyal warrior. But they will bring heroes into this attack. lane now. Yes. Everyone converging, maybe force the issue. The five man daughter is in it a bit early, but I mean, who am I to say anything? Alright, so, anyways, eight minutes and a half in. Scumbaloo getting caught out looking for the stomp. Oh, they actually do get the stomp! Might be able to do the shards. Do they have a cold embrace? Oh shit. Okay, do they have a cold embrace? Yes, they do. It will save him just barely. Do they have the TPs coming in? Yeah, they do. The black hole onto two from Universe. And Scumbaloo will get right click down. Universe with the black hole kill. Looking to stomp onto the Winter Wyvern. Playhard's in here with March as well. Shackle onto Playhard. Nice avalanche. And Universe with the double. Toss up into the air. Can he kill Envy? Sonic Wave trying to get into two. Universe with the triple. Can he make it an ultra? Our bed will actually get the kill. So it's going to be four heroes dead on the side of Geek Fam as Fnatic find themselves some very big momentum going into this mid game. We're only nine minutes in. And now you have the completed drums for Universe. Scumbaloo coming in as well. Envy falling a bit low. The Astral Spirit will spot out Scumbaloo. But they have no counter response at the moment. You know, Tron is a Medusa. He, he has to play greedy. This is where they have no choice but to try and drag things out. Can they create enough space for this Medusa? And March as well, you know, he's only on treads. Trying to build up into a soul ring. And Skullbull is just bullying Envy out into level 8 to 6. If it was night time, perhaps they could think about a dive, but Arben, bumping into Trion and Oli, won't find any power rune. I'm trying to deny him the power rune, in case it could have been a double damage, an arcane rune. Illusion. Hi, they are looking for the jump. One, two. It's kind of hard, you know, when you go for the Astral Spirit stomp. Play out inside the trees, we'll find that sentry. DJ, he knows which one was the real one. Looking for the Eclipse. Envy with the Lucent Beam. Now to get the Stomp out, it won't need the Eclipse. And down goes Playhard to DJ. That right click. And now they use a the smoke as well. They want to try and initiate here onto Skirmblue. The side flank coming out from DJ and Pylai die. Envy from the side. The Lucent Beam. It's broken the smoke. Skirmblue running in. He wanted to buy a TP, he couldn't make it in time. And now the Eclipse! Hex up into Night Stalker. He wanted to buy a TP, but blocked by that tree. Now Arbet is pushing out the middle wave. Happy. But Trion has done quite well to at least keep up above Arbet by 100 gold. Mask of Madness on the way. And Universe still happily farming up. You know, Arcane Boots done, probably Greaves on the way. Just a splinter shot. So I feel this is why you would pick like Oli on the Winter Wyvern. Usually you would see that like, they would max out the Arctic Burn. Just slightly stronger leaning. But 8 to 1. Fnatic have a 2000 gold advantage. They do have the advantage in the kill score as well. Have the black hole up. The night. Trying to chase after some heroes here, looking for the stop the silence. 
And now they want to try and fight. Going right here and starting to cling on to DJ, stealing all that damage. Scumbaloo will bring DJ down, trying to chase out the pile I die. Sonic Wave is there. Ah, but doesn't have any more mana, but the haste when he's going to try and bottle up, try and chase the void just to lower him down. Scumbaloo falling a bit low, but the screen from Ah, but he gets the kill. Haste Green Dogs going to be there. And that's it. But the universe is coming in. He has the black hole. He popped the jumps. They want to try and fight this. Avalanche, Juke around. And okay, universe. Now still going back in. Do you have to. Ooh, Earth Spitter and bang, down goes Ollie perhaps. Do they have her damage? Standing at the Midnight Pulse, probably will die. Doesn't have a Midnight Pulse and doesn't have a shrine anymore. They want to chase at the pile I died. They know he's slow. They want to try to slowly poke them down, slowly bring them low. But play hard, walking back into universe, not the way you want it to go. And Abed will run to the shrine. But Envy, he's still trying to get whatever damage he can onto that tier 1 tower. TPs are coming in from Tron, Ollie, and Playhard. Do they want to perhaps think about a smoke? Form and smoke. No mind, they want to let Tron farm. Lots of faith in Tron. Chasing off the Pilai Dai. They found them. They have to toss up into the air with the avalanche. And Pilai Dai will end up dying. Won't even get the stomp off. DJ tossing, chasing after him with Playhard as well. They get the hex. Oh, trapping him inside. But not the toss. Marjorie with the plays. And Abed will finish off Ollie. They used to I mean, looking for the black hole. Oh no, they can't go. The shackle's gonna be there. DJ has to turn around and play hard. We'll actually get that right click. But here comes Albert. They will bring March down. Here comes the Lucent Beam. Eternal Envy from the side of the Eclipse. Tron's very low. They can chase after him. They have one more Lucent Beam. Two, one. Looking for the players. They need the vision. Albert's gonna be there. And of course, with the last Lucent Beam, Envy getting the kill. And Geek Fam is just getting run over. 12 to 4 with 4,000 gold advantage. Scumbaloo just isn't making the impact which he needs to make and that's gonna be a tier 1 tower as the fortification will come up they still have the black hole available on the universe as well top lane eyeing DJ looks like a tasty kill they will go for it. Play hard. Together. DJ using the Hex up immediately. He's going to try and buy himself a bit more time. There's reinforcements on the way, but will not be there soon enough. And down goes DJ. The Scumbaloo and Play hard will find themselves one tasty support pickoff kill. Going inside the enemy jungle. They want to try and fight. They see that universe is around the shrine. March coming in with a double damage rune. Could be the, could be the rune, which helps them get that one kill. Avalanche. So no kills will be taken this day with the double damage win on the tiny. Ollie happy to get level 6 at the bottom. I mean universe is extremely fat. It's an offlaner right now in this game. My thanks. Alright, so eternal envy, you have a manta style on the way. Pilai dies still waiting to use that big earth splitter away. As Geek Fan will just back off from the top. Perhaps think about trying to make push here into the middle wave as they finally go for a smoke play. Three men smoke rotation into the dire side jungle. And using the scan, they know that the hero's there. Play out, leading the charge. But they need to go from the high ground. They do not have the terrain advantage. Envy and Universe together with their ult. They will pop the darkness, go straight for Eternal Envy. They have the black hole if they want to use it. Maybe get him to the shrine. The black hole only catching one. March, Scumbaloo is to get the Envy kill. March being back down here by Arbet. The scream. One more click and March will end up going down. So one for one trade. Looking for more. Can they cancel the TP? No, they cannot. Scumbaloo will get the TP out. And meanwhile, in the middle lane, Trion getting some good damage onto the tier 1 tower. We'll finally get it to poke. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And Tron has actually outfarmed his opponents because of it, and he still has an ancient stack as well. They're picking up the ancient stack because of the scout out from the Astral Spirit. And 13 to 6. I mean, Fnatic, they don't have to rush, they don't have to force the issue at the moment, but they have DJ together with a smoke play, and NV, they have the Eclipse. Going straight into the jungle, in fact. Committing the Serpent Wards for this very sneaky play. Radiant Universe as well coming in with the jump charge. But Geek Fam, do they know? 
it doesn't seem like they do. And even if they were to make it in time to the Roche bit, they can't contest. So we will see the 13 to 6 play coming up here for Fnatic. Roshan as well into the inventory and the Roche. Net worth advantage will be completely theirs. A bit of a drop though after that tier 1 tower fell. So it's actually going to be Assange and Yasha coming up from Chion. Not a Manta style. Okay. Envy's itemization as well, going to a Manta style. Nigma going for them. Okay, he gets the stun up onto Ollie into the Midnight Pulse as well. Should be more than enough damage with the Stomp. Ollie should be dead. Love Splitter as well. Bang. Miss. Okay. Nice Winter's Curse. Ollie's actually gonna get out, but Envy. He just will be popped. He does get the trade kill here on the tiny. He just down, but still worth it. Most unfortunate. But still pretty content. Pilot is entering the enemy jungle. No wards whatsoever. Uh, unusual. Tran will say hi. He's just making sure that the ancient stacks are. No, whether they're there or not. DJ has seven ones up in a bit. Black hole up in 20. Ultimate up soon onto Eternal Envy. March. They will actually go for a three man smoke once more. Could bump into DJ. Where will they go? They have vision. They know that DJ is there. Not not exactly the kill they want to get. It's the easiest secure kill. They pop the darkness. DJ, he's rattling away as fast as he can. They get the void. The hex has already been there. He's thinking about popping out the Serpent Wards with things against it instead. So they do get a support kill and smoking up for a pause 5. Well, let's just say that wasn't the ideal circumstances for them. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Worthy tribute. All right. So play hard. As the sights on Pyle I die, could be thinking, but will two heroes be enough? March, he pops the drum charge, trying to get us forward out here, and the silence onto Pyle I die will be enough. Toss, tree grab, all the damage, but here comes Universe, they have the black hole on two, the counter initiation is there with the Arbit and the Scream Man, of course, with the Orchid, play hard goes down and down low goes March as well. Die hard indeed, what a dive under the tier 2 tower they tried, but you know, an ET is just so tanky. And I don't think they anticipated the Blink Dagger up onto the Enigma. That was the first time he's shown it this game. Very, very tough call. You know, Abed level 17 already. BKB on the way up. Okay, will it be enough to carry against this Chion? Ooh, this Medusa hurts like a truck, especially with that double damage rune. And you will have the mech on the way up for universe. Our bad. Silent stuff. Looking for the stomp. Might be enough with the earn charge. He needs one more void. Whew, play hard. Very close. Maybe with a bit more damage. If there was a spirit vessel, Albert probably would have died there. We haven't seen Skumbaloo really get involved in a while. He will be making his way into a pipe. Scanning. And Geek Fam, they are trying to make the moves. They want to invade the enemy jungle. Creating space for this Razor to farm and creating space for the Dusa. Right, you have a Scardi on the way up. 
Skimbaloo running forward, trying to chip away onto that Ice Ogre Frost Mage. You have Black Hole up in 70 seconds. It feels like you just don't have a choice if you're a fanatic, you have to drag the game out. And Manta Cell complete for Eternal Envy. Radiant are scanning. They will use a scan, very skeptical of, you know, perhaps a smoke play. But no rush, Universe using, oh, cutting the trees. He's found Ollie running away with the Arctic Burn. But they will try to clear things up before Roche maybe up in two minutes. Get the waves pushed out. The top is being pressured by Tron. Now because he's so tanky, he feels more confident in just, you know, just pushing out by himself. Very different compared to like the Dusa, which was just farming up the jungle, farming up a storm, still top of the net worth, and Arbe not too far behind as well. Dyer's top tower is under attack. ET waiting for that level two Earth Splitter. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, using the speed aura. I guess it helps get the creeps pushed on a bit, tiny bit quicker, you know what I mean. Pile I die, laying out an astral spirit. Just saying hi to Trion. Massive ancient stack. Mmm, tasty gold. Guess you went back into the BKB first, not the Manta style. Give them the ping on a smoke. They want to go for a smoke, but they don't know. Oh, this this could be pretty big if it's scouted out by by this observer ward. They will go for a smoke play. I don't think the observer ward actually scouted them out. It was blocked by the trees. This could be the surprise factor that they were looking for. Dyer's middle the Enigma and friends, they have to know that the rest of the heroes are off the map. It's either Abed or them. Chipping away into the towers. Sanjin Yasha and Skadi are already complete, and they will actually take the tier 2 tower. But Playhard's way too far. Oh, sorry, Scumblue is way too far ahead in front by himself. Getting the stomp. Gonna be off the mark. Taking care of the little kobold. Chasing up the DJ. Diving into the tier 3. Not the smartest idea. Universe in a bit of trouble. Blink dagger complete. Oh, now there goes the Eclipse Universe. The Winter's Curse. Where's it gone? Oh my god, on the wrong heroes, but Envy in between the entirety of Geek Fam. Will he survive this? I think not. Where's the black hole? No! And Universe! Right clicked away by Chon the Medusa. DJ's gonna hold him in place. Abed's gonna try and kill Playhard. He will succeed. Scumbler's still diving with the static link damage. What was that universe? Blinking into the split shot from Chion. And now they wanna chase. They get the hex up. Abed. No damage. The avalanche will land. Wait, this cold embrace as well. They're chasing after DJ. And down goes DJ. Chion very happy with that. And March will toss him back up. So it'd be easier for them to just retreat back to the shrine. And they did get the tier 2 tower. So that was still a pretty big win for Geek Fam. It's the first time in this game they finally won a team fight. Ollie just waiting up there. Still waiting for the universe black hole, going to the Shiva's god, they will smoke up. Could find themselves some tasty kills, but Roshan's gonna be up in one minute and a half. So, scouting it out, pushing up together with Arbet. Could find the jump they were looking for, play hard, breaking the smoke. Envy, they have to wonder, do they have vision there? And they, bl they, they blinked out, they don't want to take the risk. I think Geek Fam, they way away. Oh, we're actually going right in with Pulse. Well, for Sun, Arbet, Orchid, Silence gonna be your Scumbler staying in the front lines. Universe waiting at the back, ever so patient. 
And they, after the darkness was popped, they decided, let's just back out. You don't want to fight at night. Mama always said, don't fight when it's dark. And now they will go for their own smoke play, Geek Fam. They want to be the aggressors. They know that if they win this fight, they have the time to do Roshan after this. And the longer this game drags on, things look slightly easier for Geek Fam because of this Medusa pick now. And the scan already being used, they know exactly where Geek Fam are. They will go for their own smoke play. As Geek Fam are at the top in the enemy, enemy jungle. Scumbaloo standing in the front. Oh, he's been spotted out. And they know where he is. Scumbaloo, what were you doing? Not when Roshan was so low. And they're gonna walk into the Roche pit. They won't find it, but Roche will be up just instantly right now. And Envy's just going straight for it. Septimod's gonna be committed as well. And with the threat of the black hole, do you really want to try and contest the Roshan? The Astral Spit will be used to try and scout some heroes out using the tree. Play hard, the buyback comes out from the Razor. They want to try and contest this. Looking for the Astral Spirit. In the stomp, but Abed, he's gonna pop his BKB and just back out of there. Roche is falling very low. They have to try and make something happen here, especially with Tron inside the pit. He's gonna take care of the Serpent Wards first. Very, very dodgy fight right now for both sides. Skumbaloo cannot afford to die here. He fought back for this. Sean, oh yeah, going into initiation of the Eclipse as well. Where's, where's Universe? He's not there. DJ turned to stone immediately. Will get clicked down. The Astral Earth Splitter will not be enough. It looks like they will actually bring down Abed. We actually did get the Aegis. Oh, Black Hole's gonna be cancelled by the Winter's Curse. Very nicely done from Ollie. A universe where everyone will all go down to Tron. Scumbaloo actually claims to kill, triple kill, four heroes dead on the side of Fnatic. And Playhard, he's going for more. He's going to find Arbed, and it looks like, like he will. Full team wipe. And Playhard gets the mega kill streak, and they will go charging straight down the middle lane. No blackout, instantly cancelled. And you can see the full value of this Oli pick. BKB or not, it doesn't matter. There is a Winter Wyvern. And they're going straight for the tier 3 tower. Have Geek Fam done it? Have they just taken Geek Game 1? And the tower will fall. No black hole as well. Things will be very hard here. As it looks like a lane of racks will be going the way of Geek Fam. Very nicely done, and that's gonna be one lane potentially too. But that was, that was sick for them to just hold that fight like that. I totally forgot that the Winter Wyvern had such an effect, especially against an Enigma. Hi, looking to try and stop some heroes. Quickly by using the stun, he will use it onto Scum Blue to get the hex up. Shackle as well, March tossing his teammate out of the base. What the hell, that's a very long shackle. Envy chasing after the BKB, but it's about to expire. Winter's Curse now comes out. Albert, oh, oh, the damage is too much. Envy goes down. What a Winter's Curse coming out here from Oli. And that's gonna be Geek Fam just backing out right now. Perfectly content with the spoils of war, taking out two melee barracks. And now they can even afford to go for the shrines. 12,000 gold advantage. This game escalated very quickly. And you can see the exact moment on this graph where everything shot up. Top shrine has fallen. Uh, play hard. He's going ham to Arbet. Trying to bait out the BKB. Even baiting out the BKB will be a very big win here for this playhard. Oh, here comes Universe into the Midnight Pulse. Is this the Jabate? I don't think so. He, he has one charges. Run, 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 run. Nowhere to go. Scream and the Shadow Strike will follow him. Universe still on the hunt. Silence. Ollie's there just in case. And you've got a Daedalus on the way up for Chion. Anyway, Smart, she's gonna have an Assault Kuras very soon. Double damage rune, they need, 
Okay, need this not to go to the Dusa. Envy, he's looking for it. Oh no, it went to the Dusa. That's very scary right now. Anyways, Geek Fam, they can take that time. With a super farmed Medusa, there is no need for them to make any unnecessary moves at this point. But they will get the tier Dyer's 2 tower. tower Pushing into the black hole will be a bit hard though. The flank play, the smoke flank play. They've caught one, Dyer's they've caught Skumbaloo. And he's gonna pop their BKB, they will blink out. They can't even find under their own shrine. Looking for the multiple stuns. Universe is a two-man black hole, but it will not be enough. The BKBs are popped. Envy's gonna use the Eclipse. Do can they kill anyone? Alright, Trion just stands his ground. Sonic Wave's not really gonna do that too much. Trion just stands his ground, but Albert already got the double. Somehow they're winning this fight. Trion gonna right click down and down goes DJ. This is now this is where they fight because when you're going up against such a super found Medusa, Universe. Oh, can they cancel the TP? Yes, they can! Play hard! And Universe looking for the Astral Stomp. You're gonna chase that to play hard. Looks like he will probably end up dying here as Tron already finished off Universe. And that's going to be a 3 for 2 trade as the Shaman did buy back for that fight. And very happy. And after all this time, this Dusa is still super, super farmed. Alright, so you're gonna have a Halberd coming up from Pylai Die. Albert's doing his best to try and carry this team. No choice but to play for the late game as it is in the current circumstances, but the very late game, in fact. Alright, so play hard, going for an Aghanim Scepter. Universe just wants to complete that Shiva's God. Let's look at buyback status for a bit, shall we? What he wants to buy back is the Tiny and the ET. But they are very awkwardly grouped up. Can they make anything happen? They do not have black for 40 seconds. They want to go. Nice Mar. Initiation. Push it for Universe, laying down the Midnight Pulse onto two heroes. And someone's still alive. Oh, nice, nice Winter's Curse. Universe is going to get right clicked down by Arbet. Earth Splitter landing onto two. Chasing out for more. Playhard still hunting. He has the Void. He's going to try and use his Spirit Vessel onto Eternal Envy. Chasing him down, but over in the back line. Looks like they found one target. It will be the Queen of Pain. Can they kill Arbet though? March will actually end up getting right clicked down. And chasing after Eternal Envy with the Static Link. They have more than enough right click. Envy's going to get hunted down. No way for him to go. He's going to try and strength. Toggle his way out of this, but no, it's too late. And three heroes dead, no buyback. Enigma will buy back. He has the black hole. He needs to make a miracle play with the sonic wave. But will it be enough damage? That's the question. I think not. I think this is over. March coming in. He does get the initiation onto universe, tossing him to Chuan. What was that? March into the sonic wave. Three men black hole coming up. But Universe is dead. March? I'm not sure what he's doing, but okay. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Tron, way too tanky. He still has the cheese. He's gonna pop the stone gaze. And, initiate. and the GG will be called by Envy. That was clowny. That was a risk. If they were not ahead by so much, that play would have cost them potentially the game. What a game. Game one. Only and that's the that's the best part guys. That's the best part. This is only game one between Fnatic versus Geek Fan. I hope you guys are ready for more Dota. Because we're gonna be taking a quick break. I mean, here's the scoreboard for you guys. Almost felt like if you know if you want to commit to such early aggression, you need to Yeah, you pretty much need to commit to it all in. You can't just like be half-assed and just stop. Didn't really think like they were on the same pitch in terms of what they wanted to accomplish yet, but Few moments of brilliance from Universe. Chan totally carrying his team this game with a super farmed Medusa. As you can see. So great stuff. And the intensity is there on who was right, 
who was left. Only this game will let you know, this game will let us decide. So we'll be taking a quick break, we'll be back for more GESC action here on the Beyond the Summit 2 channel. I'm Hades, we'll be back for Fnatic and Geek Fam Game 2, see you guys soon.